Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We are studying the features of the meta language and we are also studying as an important part of it the concept of it, the concept of a marker. We have seen that this it or marker is very effectively used by Panini to form another technical term which is generically referred to as a pratyahara like ak, ach, hal, ik, yan, etc. This technical term allows Panini to describe linguistic phenomena, facts of object language related to certain sound set in a very concise manner. We have also seen how these pratyaharas are formed and the role of it in it. Then as an important feature of the meta language of Panini, which is different than the object language, we started studying the definition of it provided by Panini himself in his Ashtadhyayi. And mind you, this is the beginning of any grammatical learning traditionally in the Paninian grammatical tradition. Be it the Kaumudi tradition or be it the Kashika tradition, it is these its, the markers and the Pratyaharas they are taught right at the beginning. If you master this technique, if you know which sound coming at the end of an element is marked as it by which sutra, half the battle is won. That is the feeling a student gets after he studies these sutras and after he enters the grammar of Panini. So, we have studied 132 which termed a vowel which is also assigned the feature of nasality as it. Then we also studied how consonants at the end of different verbal elements be it a nominal root, a pratipadika or a verbal root, a dhatu or a suffix, a pratyaya or an augment, an agama is termed as it and we have seen examples which illustrate this particular point. We also saw the negation. So which sounds at the end of the verbal elements are not to be termed as it and that in a very restricted, very limited domain namely vibhakti and the sound set which is not to be termed as it is the varga, the tha, the dha, na, sa and ma. These seven sounds are not to be termed as it when found at the end of the verbal elements namely the pratyayas, the vibhakti pratyayas. After seeing these two sutras, we also summarized by saying that there should be an eka vakyata that should be made of both these sutras and then we can get the meaning about the sutras, the meaning of the sutras dealing with the technical term it. So now the topic, broad topic that we are dealing with is the markers in the meta language of Paninian grammar and the consonant markers. These are the sutras which deal with, which define the consonant markers. And out of these, we have already seen these two sutras, now Vibhakta Uttasmaha and Halantyam. Now today we shall see these next sutras in which some other questions get addressed. For example, 
we raise these questions, can the technical term it be stated to consonants, other consonants at other positions other than final? Is it possible to term a consonant it which appears at the beginning of an element? And is it possible to term a cluster of vowel and consonant as it? So let us study these questions in the light of these two sutras in detail. First, we take up 1.3.5 for our study. 1.3.5 is Adir Yitu Davaha. Adir Yitu Davaha. In this sutra, there are two padas that are visible. One is Adihi and the other one is Yitu Davaha. Yitu Davaha. This is a very special character, special symbol and a special sound. This one, this is a nasal consonant in the ch class and to be pronounced as ny, ch, ch, j, j, ny. So, ny to davaha. Now, adihi is one one of adi meaning initial and ny to davaha is one slash three of ny to do. Ye to do is a compound word made up of three components namely ye and to and do, ye to do and this is one slash three of ye to do, ye to dabaha. Now we have two words in one slash three, the two words that continue from the previous sutra are upadeshe and it. So now the meaning of this sutra is Upadeshe Adayaha Yitu Davaha It Saudhnyasyuhu. In the initial enunciation, Yi, Tu, and Du at the beginning of a verbal element are termed It. I repeat, in the initial enunciation, Yi, Tu, and Du at the beginning of a verbal element are termed It. So, the next point is what is this ye, to and do? Let us study them one by one. So we observe that they are nothing but the clusters, consonant plus vowel. So ye is made up of a consonant y, the fifth consonant in second row that is ch, ch class and a vowel e. Both these together are termed as it, as a cluster, yi. The element which has yi as it in the initial position will be then called yi it, yi it. An element which has yi as it is called yi it. And this will qualify another verbal element which possesses this property. So, for example, if a verbal root has ye at the beginning, so this verbal root will be called yeet, yeet, dhatuhu and so on. And then this feature will be used to trigger certain grammatical operation. For example, 3.2.187. What is this? 3.2.187 is yeetaha, khtaha. What this sutra means is that add a suffix kth after a verbal root having ye it in the sense of present tense. So, kth is added in the sense of present tense after a verbal root which has ye as it, ye cluster. Generally, the suffix kth is added to a verbal root in the sense of past tense, but the exceptions are treated by 32187 notably the verbal roots which have ye at the beginning as it. So, the example is yemida over here yemida this is the verbal root and as you can observe ye as a cluster appears at the beginning of this verbal root. So, this ye will be termed as it and this a at the end is termed as it by 1.3.2 and after we delete these two we get the verbal root mid and the suffix the is added to it and this curve will be 
termed as it by 1.3.8 which we shall study later on and then it will be deleted and you will get the form t. So, we will get mid plus t as the next step in the derivation. Further doing some more processing on this we will get the form min, min something which is getting anointed now in the present tense that will be the meaning of min. So, this the suffix will denote the present tense and not the past tense. Why? Because it has marker yi at the beginning and so yi tahaktaha gets triggered and so we get this meaning derived from this word. Let us look at 2 as a it. So, 2 is also a cluster, it is made up of consonant t and vowel u. Both these together are termed it by 1.3.5. The element which has 2 as it together in the initial position will be called twit. An element which has 2 as it is called twit, and this will qualify another verbal element which possesses this property. So, a verbal root dhatu will be called twit, twit dhatu. And then this feature will be used to trigger certain grammatical operation. For example, 3.3.89, which is twito athuch, twito athuch. What this sutra means is at the suffix athuch which has ch coming at the end as it by of course 1.3.3 though so the suffix that is visible in the object language is athu. So at the suffix athu after a verbal root having to it in the sense of bhava that is state. Let us look at 3389. 3389 is twito athuch. Twito athuch. The meaning of this sutra is at the suffix athuch, in which ch coming at the end is termed as it by 133. So, the suffix that is visible in the object language is athu. So, at the suffix athuch, after a verbal root having to as it, in the sense of bhava, that is a state. So, for example, we have a verbal root stated in the dhatu patha as two way pru company, two way pru company that is to tremble. So, here is a verbal root two way pru at the beginning of which appears a cluster two and at the end appears ru. This ru will be termed it by 1.3.2 because this is stated to be a nasal and coming to this beginning two, it will be stated, it will be termed an it by 1.3.5 adir yi tu davaha. So, this is two, this is it. When we delete both these markers, we get the verbal root vape to tremble. Then we add 1 3 by 3 3 89, we add the suffix athuch, then ch is marked as it and it is deleted. So, we get the form vepathu, the state of trembling, vepathu, vepathuscha sharire me ro maharshascha jayate as Arjuna says in Srimad Bhagavad Gita first chapter, vepathu, trembling, the state of trembling. Now, let us look at do coming at the beginning of a verbal element which is termed as it by 135. Do is once again made up of a cluster consonant d and vowel u. Both these together are termed as it by this sutra 135. The element which has do as it in the initial position will be called now dvit, dvit, an element which has do as it. This will qualify another verbal element which possesses this particular property namely dvit. So, a dhatu will be called dvit, dvit dhatuhu and this feature will be used to trigger certain grammatical operation. For example, 3388, 
So what is 3388? 3388 is dvitaha ktrihi. What this means is add the suffix ktri and k becomes it by 1.3.8. We shall study this later on. So the suffix that is visible in the object language is 3 only. So add the suffix 3 after a verbal root having do it in the sense of bhava that is a state. The example is dukroi, dukroi karane, dukroi means to do. So what is dukroi? Dukroi has two ith elements, one at the beginning and one at the end. This end here which is a consonant will be termed it by 1.3.3 halantyam. Now coming to this do, this entire do will be termed it by this 1.3.5 adir ye to do, ye to davaha. So this root is called dvit. So the verbal root we get is kru after removing the markers, the its do and ye. Now we add the suffix 3 which is triggered by this do by 3388 and so we get the stage crew plus 3. So we remove the marker k over here and we get crew plus 3. So we get the word kru 3, the state of doing and by applying 4420 we add this m immediately after this kru 3 and so we get the word kru 3 m. Kritrima. Kritrima means something generated by the state of doing. So you have to do something to generate. That means artificial, something that is not natural, not as it is. Kritrima is artificial. This is how the word Kritrima gets generated because the verbal root kru is dvit. So you add the suffix 3 and so you add the other suffix ma to it. So these are the examples of ye, to and do clusters coming at the beginning of the verbal elements. Let us uh, summarize what we have studied so far. So 1.3.5 Adir Yintu Davaha, this sutra assigns the technical term it to not an individual sound but to a cluster consonant plus vowel. Thus it becomes a unique sutra in this set as no other sutra does this. Each and every other sutra in this set assigns the technical term it to only an individual sound. This is the only sutra in this set which terms a cluster and it. However, there are some more clusters which are not explicitly assign the term it in the text of Ashtadhyayi. Such clusters however are assumed to be known and are used in the sutras in the Ashtadhyayi. For example, ir. Ir is a cluster which is made up of vowel e and consonant r is termed it and this term it to ir is never explicitly stated in the Ashtadhyayi that is Paninyan grammar. But it is assumed by the Sutra Irito Va 3.157 in the Ashtadhyayi. Now the later commentators had to fill in this gap by adding a statement Ira It Saudhnya Vacha. The technical term it should be assigned to this entire cluster ir in order to justify this mention of Panini Irito Va. This is how Sutra 1.3.5 assigns the technical term it to these clusters. We have studied the examples which show how the it term applied to ye, to and do functions. That is what does it bring about? What Sutra, what, what grammatical operations it triggers and the final forms derived by such sutras. Let us now proceed 
to study the next sutra in the set which also assigns the technical term it to a particular consonant single consonant at the beginning of a verbal element. The sutra is 1.3.6 which is shah pratyayasya. This sound this is to be pronounced as sh and not to be confused with sh or s, sh or s. This is not that. This is sh, sh, sh pratyayasya. There are two words in the sutra. One is shaha and the other one is pratyayasya. Shaha is 1 slash 1 and pratyayasya is 6 slash 1. Shaha is 1 slash 1 of sh, sh together with vowel. However, this stands for the sound sh which is a consonant. For the sake of convenience, the sound sh is mentioned together with a. But this entire symbol stands for only this consonant sh. And pratyayasya is 6 slash 1 of the word pratyaya that is a suffix. This 6 slash 1 has the same meaning as it has in the object language namely of. So, the words continued in the previous from the previous sutra are upadeshe which is in 7 slash 1, it and adihi from the previous sutra. So, the meaning of this sutra is upadeshe pratyayasya adihi shaha itsaudnyasyat meaning, meaning thereby that the sound sh at the beginning of a pratyaya in the initial enunciation is termed it. The sound sh at the beginning of a pratyaya in the initial enunciation is termed it. So now sh in the initial position in the upadesha but not each and every verbal element which has sh at the beginning is termed as it. It is only the pratyaya at the beginning of which sh appears and then it can be termed as it that is all. So the domain is very limited now. Let us look at the example where sh is marked as it. The example is 4117 and the sutra is pracham shphas taddhitaha, pracham shphaha taddhitaha. Pracham is 6, 3 of prach, shphaha is 1, 1 of shph and taddhitaha is 1, 1 of taddhita. Words continued are pratyayaha from 311, striyam from 413 and yayaha that is 5 slash 1 from the previous sutra 4116. So now the meaning of this 4117 is a suffix shp is added after a word ending in suffix yai in the sense of feminine and this suffix is called taddhita. This suffix shp is called taddhita. So let us look at the word derived by applying this sutra. We start the derivation with the word garga, the name of a particular person, a sage. We add the suffix yai to it by 41105 and then we get the word form gargya. Gargya means a descendant of garga. The suffix yai has y at the end which is termed it by 1.3.3 and then it is deleted. So, garga plus yai by 41105, then this year is termed as it and deleted. So, you get garga plus year, then you, then this year triggers the operation where this initial vowel is lengthened by 72115. So, you get the form garga plus year that is the next step. Then because of this year, this final a uh gets deleted. So, you get now garg plus year by 641848 
and so you get the form Gargya, meaning a descendant of Garga. What happens to this? Now we add the suffix sh by 4117. So you have Gargya plus sh. This sh now at the beginning of a pratyaya will be termed as it by this sutra sha pratyayasya and then it will be deleted by tasya lopaha. So you get now gargya plus pha. Then we add the feminine suffix nish in which, which sha comes at the end. Here we will not apply this sutra. Why? Because even though sha is there and finally it is a marker but it is coming at the end of the pratyaya whereas this sutra is stating the term it to sh which comes only at the beginning of a pratyaya like here. Here it is coming at the end. So the sh will not get it saudhnya because of this sutra it will become it by 133. So now by applying 712 we will replace this initial consonant f by ayan and so we will get gargya plus ayana plus nish. Then this ng initial will be termed as it by 138 and sh will be termed as it by 133 and they will be deleted and finally we'll, you will get gargya plus ayana plus e. And by applying 64148 we will have gargya plus ayan plus e. So you will get gargya plus ayan plus e by applying 842 and finally we will get the form gargya yani a female descendant of garga. So let us not go into the details of all these meanings which will be explained later on. Right now for us what is important is sh is a suffix is a pratyaya at the beginning of which appears sh which is termed as it by this sutra and this triggers the operation namely addition of the suffix nish by 4141 shit gauradi in which which shit is used because this suffix is shit having sh as it therefore this nish is added. Let us summarize what we said about 4117 is that sh is a pratyaya, sh occurs at its beginning and therefore is termed it by 136 and is deleted by 139. This pratyaya is then called shit which triggers the operation stated by 4141 namely shit gauradi bhyascha. This 4141 as the suffix nish and we get the form gargya yani. To summarize what we have said so far, what we have studied so far, we can say that 1.3.5 and 6 both assign the technical term it to word initial elements. 135 assigns the term to a cluster C plus V consonant plus vowel and 136 assigns the technical term it to the sound sh, individual sound sh. Both these elements then trigger the grammatical operation. They are used by Panini to trigger certain grammatical operations. Then we shall study the remaining two sutras in the coming lecture. Thank you for your attention.